0.9% of our universe is made up of ordinary stuff. The stuff that you and I and the Earth and the Moon and the Sun, everything we can see in the universe, that accounts for just 4.9%. So you might be feeling very small and insignificant in the universe, just one person on planet Earth, which is just one star in a galaxy, many, many galaxies. That may make you feel insignificant, but take it away from this point now. Actually, you are truly special because you are made up of the stuff in our universe that's really, really small and unique. So we're all very special. You can take that away. Um, but if you ask a physicist what, what they understand, electrons, protons, quarks, all of these lovely words that you know, that's just 4.9% of the universe. And the rest of our universe is dark. Uh, now, we've got 26.8% of our universe is made up of something we call dark matter. It's the strong gravitational force in our universe that glues our own Milky Way galaxy together. If you didn't have dark matter, our own Milky Way galaxy would simply fly apart. I want to focus on this stuff that we've called dark energy. 68.3% of our universe made up of something called dark energy. This is just the name that we've given to some mysterious source of energy that's making our universe expand faster and faster each and every day. This is a very strange idea that you know, something is causing our universe to get expand faster and faster. It's like energy is coming out of nothing. So um, I compile the list of all of the different things that it could be. And, and top on the list, to explain this very strange observation, uh, requires us to think about the physics of nothingness, which is a bit of a strange thing to think about. Uh, now, there are big regions of our universe where there's absolutely nothing, nothing at all. There's no particles like we're made up of. There's no dark matter. Expansive nothingness. Nothing. <laughs> Apart from virtual particles that can simply pop in and out of existence. And in doing so, they give the universe energy. And this is not complete science fiction. Uh, this has actually been measured in a laboratory. You can create a vacuum inside a laboratory, and you can measure uh, these virtual particles that can pop in and out of existence. It's something that comes directly from quantum theory and is well known about. And what happens in our universe, if we've got an expanding universe, we have more and more nothingness, because the universe is getting bigger and bigger. If there's more nothingness, there's more chance for these virtual particles to pop into existence, giving us energy, which causes the universe to expand even faster, and we get this wonderful perpetual motion machine. And it's a glorious theory. And could that be the answer to the challenge I was set? Unfortunately not. Because if you take the measurements that they've made in the laboratory of what happens in the, in, in the lab, uh, or if you take uh, the theories of particle physics, our universe shouldn't exist as it does today. If the physics of nothingness as we understand it was right, uh, our universe should have accelerated out to a gigantic scale long before the first stars and galaxies ever formed. So we can tick that one off the list, maybe. Um, so I've got a list here of all the different ideas uh, of what's causing the expansion of our universe to get faster and faster each and every day. Top of the list is this idea of nothingness, the energy of a vacuum. It could just be the particle physicists have got their sums wrong. It happens all the time, all the time. They can't trust the particle physicists. Uh, <laughs> no, you can. No, but sometimes they do get things wrong. That's top of the list. That's what most scientists think at the moment to explain this mysterious dark side of our universe. Number two on the list, maybe there's a new weird force field in the universe. There are four fundamental forces that we know about. Four fundamental forces. Gravity keeps you stuck on the ground. Electromagnetism keeps all your particles stuck together. The strong and weak nuclear force, and those are forces that act on really, really small scales. Those are our four forces. Maybe there's a fifth that we don't know about. One idea that's out there. Number three, maybe Einstein's theory of gravity is wrong. So everything that I've talked about so far is all within a framework that Einstein got it right. Number four, the topic of our discussion today, the multiverse. And there may be the answer to this whole puzzle of why we've got this weird universe that's accelerating really rapidly. Maybe that's just because we live in a really weird universe in a sea of multiple universes. And maybe that can explain 
all of these weird observations. It could be that the particle physicists have got it right, this energy is just coming from the vacuum, but we just happen to be in a really weird universe where the vacuum behaves differently than we'd expect. So that's the subject of our, of our talk today, thinking about the multiverse. Now, um, whenever you talk about the multiverse in uh, scientific circles, uh, people start kind of like making that sort of noise. They start getting anxious. They start rubbing their hands. Now, um, as scientists, our job is uh, people come up with theories. Scientists will come up with a theory. Uh, we build some uh, equipment, some design and experiment. We go out and test the theory. And our goal is to prove the theory wrong. And that's kind of the way that science works. And the problem with this idea of the multiverse theory that a lot of scientists get really anxious about is that it's impossible to design an experiment to directly test this idea of the multiverse. Because by definition, these other universes, if they exist, are outside of our universe, and there's no way we can communicate with them if uh, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. So and we've already decided that Einstein's theories may be right, or at least we, we tick that up higher up on the list. So it's very hard to communicate with these other universes. And so some scientists will say, this is a pointless theory to even consider because I cannot test it, it is untestable, and therefore we're not even going to consider it. But what I want to share with you today is um, three different ways that we can actually test this idea of, uh, of the multiverse. And we can't directly go out and observe these other universes, but we can make observations in our own universe that can tell us about what else might be out there uh, in the multiverse. So let's start off with a definition of what is our universe. Um, so if we're going to embrace Einstein's theory of general relativity, then nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. And so our universe, what we can observe, is limited by how far light could have traveled since the Big Bang, which was 13.8 billion years ago. So what I'm going to describe as our universe is a sphere around us uh, which is the size of how long it would take light to travel 13.8 billion years. And that is going to be our definition of our universe. And I can do lots of experiments within our universe, because I can make all of these um, different observations. Um, now, one experiment I can make is I can ask, does our universe look like it's infinite? Um, now, let's take ourselves back to, um, to the days when people weren't sure whether the Earth was flat or not. And actually, there seems to be a, a rebirth movement of the whole the Earth is flat thing. Like All of my undergraduates at one, one week all decided that the Earth was flat, and I had to show them a load of images that it wasn't. The Earth is not flat. But imagine that you didn't know that. Imagine uh, that you were uh, inside a football stadium. This is uh, the Hibs football stadium up in Edinburgh. Best football team, by the way. I know we're down in England, but this is the best Scottish team. Anyway, imagine you were in the football stadium and you were trying to work out whether the earth was flat. Based on your evidence within that stadium, because you can't see outside of the, of the arena, you would say that the earth was flat. Let's now um, move ourselves to the Netherlands, another very flat place. Uh, excellent. Some of them answer down here at the front. Um, again, as far as you look, you would say that the Earth was flat. Yeah? So as far as you look. The definition of whether something is flat is if I set off in one direction, I won't come back on myself. And of course, when people did go and navigate the Earth, they found that indeed if they set off in one direction, eventually they would come back in on themselves. But I can make this same measurement in our universe, what I can observe in our universe. And I can say, how flat is our universe? If I set off in one direction, will I keep on going forever? Um, now, I've made these measurements. So lots of other people have made these measurements. And I can tell you, based on how flat our own universe is, I can tell you that the rest of the universe has to be, has to have enough, has to be big enough to contain at least 100 other universes that are the same size of our own. Just because I know how flat our own universe is, and that tells me how flat the rest of the universe out there must be. So I know that our own universe, there has to be at least 100 other ones out there like our own. And that's our first piece of evidence, and I, and I don't think anyone can uh, object to that one, because those are really uh, detailed measurements that we've made. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAITV.